It's amazing to see all of these new contributors. Uh, so, hello, welcome. My name is Nate, and this talk is how to contribute to Blender. Uh, so just a little bit about me. Um, I am a animation module contributor. Uh, I'm a Blender enthusiast, as are probably most of you. Uh, and I'm also a father to a toddler. I've been using Blender since this splash screen. What? Yeah, thank you. Uh, and I've also actually worked at CG Cookie briefly about a decade ago. So all this to say, um, I've been with Blender for a little while. Um, so here's some things I'm not. I am not a professional 3D artist by any stretch. Uh, I'm also not a Blender master. Uh, Blender keeps changing. I try to keep up, but I cannot. Um, so I'm definitely not a Blender guru. I'm also not someone with a lot of free time. Uh, re toddler. Uh, and like, that's okay, because Blender is created by a bunch of different people. Um, obviously, this is like a vast oversimplification of the community, but I really like the graphics, so I kept it in. Um, but yeah, like, Blender needs you. Blender needs everybody. Uh, and this talk is anybody can contribute to Blender. So I created a little diagram of like most of the things that you contribute to Blender. Um, I've kind of organized them here from least technical to most technical. Uh, so this talk is actually gonna focus on kind of the top portion, translation, user documentation, and the bug reports. But for the sake of time, we're actually going to reverse that a little bit, starting with bug reports down to translation. Uh, hopefully we can get through everything, but we'll see. So first up are bugs, or as my toddler likes to say, uh-oh. <laughs> uh, bugs happen. Like, software is hard. Uh, but the, the Blender team actually does like a really amazing job at fixing bugs, providing stable releases. Uh, I've heard rumors that like other software uh, in the 3D space, sometimes it's not very stable. Uh, but Blender does a pretty good job. Um, but with that being said, like, they need your help. They, they really do. There's, there's a finite number of devs, and there are way, way more users. So uh, if you see something, report something. Uh, a bug, that is. Um, please do not do this. Now, this is a fake tweet that I created, but it is actually very, very similar to something I saw a little while ago. And like, it's not helpful. It's actually pretty humorous because like, this individual is using like a beta version of Blender. They're like, it just, alpha, alpha well yeah, alpha. It just like completely destroyed my workflow. I'm gonna go back to a very old LTS. Like, what? Also, what, what was the issue? Like, we would like to know so we can fix it. Um, so yeah, please don't just like go complain on social media. Might feel good, but it really doesn't help anything. So what should you do? And I think the best way to do that is with a little story. So. You're working on the most important shot of your film. I mean, like this thing has everything. It has battle axes, it has sword, it has fire. Like this is the shot that will win you the Oscar. It'll save your studio from financial collapse. And finally, it will make your cat proud of you. Uh, there's just like one tiny little issue and it's this light right here. Just needs to be like a little bit more blue. Like, okay, we can fix that. So you go and you make the little tweak and, uh-oh, this may have happened to you and it's unfortunate, but don't panic. Grab your towel, it'll be okay. <laughs> now, if you don't understand that reference, feel free to talk to me afterwards. I have a really good book recommendation for you. <laughs> uh, so what do you do then? <laughs> What do you do? Um, first, make sure it's actually a bug. So try it again. Like, reopen Blender, reopen your scene, go through the exact same steps you did, and see if it crashes. It may have been a fluke, or you actually may have encountered a bug. Uh, if you 
are able to reproduce it again, um, the next thing to do is make sure you're on the latest version of Blender. Um, if you're not, try it there. Chances are it's been fixed, especially if it's like a common bug. Um, and then the next thing to do is to try it on the latest build of Blender. Uh, these two seem very familiar, but there is a, a distinction that I will get to in a moment. Um, but first, let's see how you actually can find what version of Blender you're using. And thankfully, that's pretty easy. Inside of Blender, up in the top left corner, the Blender icon, you can select it. There is an About Blender, which opens a little About. Uh, it has the version, some other information. Uh, you can click the splash screen, which will bring up the splash screen, which also has the version of Blender. And then finally, in the bottom right corner, uh, is the little version too. So like, you should know what you're using. Um, if for some reason you're not using the latest version of Blender, it's really easy to get. You've probably done it before. Uh, it's blender.org slash download. This will have the latest release. You can go ahead and download it for any platform. Or if for some reason you need like a slightly older version, um, every single release of Blender is also on the website under download Blender org release all the way back to like the first version of Blender. Yes, you can go download Blender 1.0. Um, to get the latest build of Blender, and a build is just all of the changes uh, up to a specific point. So these are daily builds, which means every single contribution a developer has made for that day, at the end of the day, gets built into a version of Blender. So you can see there's two different versions right here. There's Blender 4.3, which is in beta, which is going to be the next release. And there's also 4.4, which is alpha, which is very, very unstable. Um, so go ahead and grab one of these builds and see if your bug's still there. Uh, if it is, well, make sure it actually hasn't been reported. If it's, again, a critical bug, the community is pretty good about finding these things and reporting them. Um, but if it's not, then that's your job. So how do we do this? Um, going to projects.blender.org, uh, this is the actual Blender project itself. This is all of the source code. Uh, there is an issues tab. This is where you submit bug reports. Um, they will be, like, once you click the issues tab, there will be a list from like most recent to least recent. Uh, you can go ahead and just look through the top to see if your bug is there or there is a little search feature right here um, where you can put in a search query for kind of your problem to see. Uh, when I was testing this out, I just thought it would be fun to see if there were any issues for deleting the default cube. And interestingly enough, there is one closed. <laughs> but I will leave that as an exercise to the reader. So if you're curious, I really recommend following along and seeing what happened. OK. So we've gone through all of the different steps. No bug report's been created, so now it's actually time to submit a bug report. And thankfully, this is like really easy to do. So inside of Blender, there's a little help menu. From that help menu, you can click report a bug. This will open up your web browser, and uh, you will need to log in. And if you don't have an account, you'll have to create an account. Uh, thankfully, it's super easy. And actually, when you do create a Blender account, uh, your Blender ID that's created is used all throughout the Blender ecosystem. So it is like super useful to have. But once you either signed in or logged in, you'll then be presented with this page. Uh, and this template will then be filled out with some like very useful information. So Blender, the program, uh, actually knows some things about your system. Um, so it knows what operating system you're using, what graphics card you're using. It also knows what version of Blender you're using, uh, the date of the commit, and also the commit hash. You don't necessarily need to worry about the commit hash. Um, developers find that useful. Uh, you just need to know that it is a useful thing to have in there. Um, there is another way to actually submit a bug report. Let me jump back a little bit. Um, so back on the projects.blender, there is a report a bug button. Um, if you click that, a very similar thing will happen. It'll bring you to a template. The only thing is, uh, since it's through the web browser, it doesn't know anything about your system. It doesn't know what operating, what operating system you're on, 
what graphics card, what version of Blender. So like the preferred method is to go back through Blender, just submit a bug just because some of that stuff is uh, submitted for you. So <clears throat> when actually creating a bug report, um, there are some useful things that you can do. So we'll, we'll first look at a not so great report uh, submitted by this joker. Um, and like right off the bat, we can see it's kind of small. Uh, like going along with our story, you, we changed the light and it crashed. But uh, like, what kind of light was it? Uh, was this in Cycles? Was this in Eevee? Like, what platform was this on? Uh, what graphics card? Maybe this was, you know, metal specifically. Maybe it was for NVIDIA. Who knows? Um, like, how do I reproduce it? Uh, like, why is this scene 3.2 gigabytes? Like, if the developer saw this, they would, like, kind of, like, bow their head and just shake a little bit. And uh, if they were to actually open up the scene, they would be presented with, like, this mess. Like, oof. Um, like, there's a lot going on here. A lot of visual noise. Uh, like, where is the light? Well, obviously, it's up there, but that's a render view, so I don't even know how we get to it. Like, this is not useful. Um, this might be your production scene. It might be where you actually got the bug, um, but it is not intuitive for somebody opening it up to actually be able to reproduce it. Um, so here's a better approach. Um, this contains a lot more information and a lot more useful information, and it's not that much more um, explanation. So right off the bat, we can see there's a little prefix cycles. Uh, during the triage process, sometimes the people doing the triage, which is just like looking at the bug reports before developers see them, they'll add these little tags or prefixes for cycles, EV, etc. If you know for a fact like yours, is a cycle bug. Um, that could be a useful thing to put in there. Uh, it also has a descriptive title. We know that it's a point lamp, uh, not any other lamp. Uh, we also now have the system information, which we got through submitting through Blender. Uh, we also tried it out in Eevee, and the bug was not there. So now a developer only has to go and look through cycles, which like eliminates half of the work. Uh, we also have easy reproducible steps. And then finally, we have a simple scene. And this simple scene is uh, very, very simple. It's like really hard to miss anything in here. You have your light, you have the thing that cre created the bug, and then as like an added bonus, I just put in the text editor, the reproducible steps. Um, so to kind of summarize, like when creating a minimally re reproducible bug, say that three times fast, um, the bun file, at a minimum, I think should contain the bug, obviously. Uh, like the whole scene should focus on the bug. It should be as minimal as possible. Uh, and then as like a third little thing, like you should name the bun file something sensible. Uh, I just put that there because when I go through bugs, um, I do not name them anything sensible. And like this is a, a whole folder full of like NLA underscore problem underscore one NLA. Like, it gets a little bit messy, and people who work on bugs all day, like I probably will appreciate it. Um, some other useful things when actually writing your bug report. Uh, one, please don't use GIFs. Uh, use a video format that you can actually be paused. If you record like a two minute workflow of you clicking through the UI, and then there's like a critical set of steps uh, that actually cause the crash, it is incredibly annoying to have to like wait another minute as the video loops around so you can just like watch the three seconds where the interesting bits happen. So please use a file format where a developer can actually go and pause, scrub through. Uh, it makes our lives much easier. Also, uh, pictures are worth a thousand words, but they aren't searchable. So definitely, if it makes sense, put some pictures in the bug report, but like please add a description to it. Um, Bugs sometimes introduce other bugs, and we need to be able to search like the history of bug reports. So adding like annotations and descriptions to your uh, images really does help. Uh, and finally, please be patient. 
Um, I worked with Brad Clark, who's actually here, on a feature appearance space, which took about three or four months of back and forth. Um, obviously, we both work full time, and this was a uh, like a part time labor of love. But I would, th I think I knew what I was doing, and then I would go submit it to him, and he would try it out, and it wouldn't work. It was a lot of back and forth. So like bugs, features, all of this takes time. Like there is a lot to do and not a lot of dev time. Um, so it's quite possible like the person you're working with isn't a paid developer, maybe a community developer. Um, so just please keep that in mind. Like don't submit your bug and like keep it on the shelf. You can be a little bit persistent every once in a while, just like trying to be helpful, but understand that these things do take time. And another thing you do is jump into the community. Um, people might not know that Blender actually has its own chat platform. Uh, there are a ton of awesome people in here. Uh, but this chat platform is super useful. Uh, one, it's like an asynchronous kind of thing. Um, but it, it is a place where users and developers can talk about actually building and making Blender. This chat platform is not for support, so if you have questions on Blender, if you need to learn how to do something, like this is, this is not that. Um, this is if you have a bug or if you have a question about maybe a potential bug, um, you can go to this specific channel. Um, in my case, I work on animation rigging, but there's Blender interface, Blender viewport sequencer, et cetera, et cetera. So there are different channels where you can go and talk to the proper people about um, different issues. But what if I've actually never encountered a bug? Well, go high five a developer. Like, again, they do a really good job and they deserve it. Uh, but yeah, maybe if you've never run into a bug but you wanna like help out, um, there's a process of triage. And triage is just, again, determining criticality. Um, so if you have a bug that impacts 50% of Blender users, like that's pretty critical. Uh, if you have a bug that, well, only one or two people ever counter, like, that's less critical. So it is, deter like, for the developers kind of determining where they should spend their time. Um, I really recommend if you are interested in triaging, you go to the Blender website. There's a handbook. Um, it has a, a pretty good set of guidelines that you should adhere to, um, mostly because, like, if you do triage wrong, it actually can be a hindrance more than a help. But like at a very base uh, case, you can look at a new bug and try to recreate it yourself. If you find the bug, you just be like, hey, I was able to recreate it in XYZ environment, um, and that can be useful. Okay, let's see, we're doing okay on time. So next up is user docs aka the manual. Uh, it's pretty easy to get the manual. Uh, inside of Blender, there's a little help menu. From the help menu, you can click the manual, which will open a web browser and take you to the corresponding manual for your version of Blender. And this manual contains a lot of useful information about, well, ideally everything in Blender and how to use it. Um, you can also, for most operators, you can right click and select online manual, and that'll take you to the corresponding place inside of the manual. Um, sometimes when you right click and select online manual, nothing happens, or it'll give you a little message like the mapping's not there. So not every single part of Blender has the mapping from your specific operator to the manual. Um, this is even potentially something you could contribute to. Um, but first, like the, the same bug reporting um, workflow for the manual uh, is basically the same workflow as for Blender. Like if you see a bug, you can report it. Uh, it's pretty easy to do. Just instead of selecting Blender, you'll select user manual from the projects.blender. Uh, from there, you'll still go to your issues tab um, you'll click submit a new issue. There will be a list of, I think, two different like templates. You want to choose a bug report. This will give you uh, that template, which will be a little bit different, but it'll ask you for some like useful information. 
One, if you happen to know what file this particular bug is in, you can add that in there. Uh, what version of Blender, what language the documentation is, actual link to the Blender documentation page, uh, a little short description. Uh, try to fill out as much as possible, um, kind of like you would with an actual Blender bug. Now, if you were paying attention, you may have noticed that uh, there is actually a little edit button up in the corner. And if you click that, you will get a 404. And this is actually not a bug. Um, this is, yeah, it, <laughs> this is a way for people with uh, commit access to be able to quickly update the manual. So commit access is basically the Blender Foundation saying, we trust you enough to give you access to be able to just contribute. Uh, most people will not have it. Um, so when you try to edit it, you'll see this. So this is where uh, I lied a little bit. And um, the contributing to the manual is actually a little bit technical. Um, so I think it's like halfway the talk, I've trapped you. Uh, so you guys are just gonna have to like write it out. Um, if you do go to the uh, how to contribute to the manual, the first thing it'll suggest is how to build it locally, which involves things like downloading the repository, setting up the build environment, setting up like Python, like installing other stuff. Uh-oh, it doesn't work. I'm like, <laughs> well, Eh, this is fine. Like, it is a little bit technically challenging, and I, I understand that. So, my suggestion is that if you are planning on regularly contributing to the manual, that you should take the time to actually learn how to download and build the manual, because that is the proper way to do it. Um, all the information you need is right there. There is also a user documentation channel where uh, the Blender does, I will be happy to help you. Um, but when actually preparing for this talk, I have found a different approach which does not require you to actually download and build it locally. Uh, I will say that it is still a little bit technical um, and there are some caveats to this approach that I will talk about uh, at the end. So when preparing for this, I actually found a bug this was like a real life bug in the documentation. It, pretty simple, there was just an extra vector in the um, description, but Alexander, uh, if you're here, thank you. Um, he put in all of the useful bits. He put in where the file was, what version of Blender was, the language, permalink, etc. He also put a little image so we can see where the issue was. So I created a new Blender conference user because me personally, I actually do have commit access, but I wanted to go through and show you the steps you could take as somebody who does not have commit access, uh, who does not want to go through the command line, installing, etc. So inside of Project Blender, instead of Blender Blender, you can go to the Blender Manual, which is a different product inside of the projects. Uh, you can click on this little fork button. And what this fork button does is it'll open a little manual, but you can get a copy of the Blender manual for your user. Like, this is how software generally works. You get a copy, you make some changes, and then you submit a request to put your changes back into Blender source code. So creating this fork will create a copy of Blender manual for the Nate conference user, which is my fake user. Um, once you have your copy, I've jumped ahead a tiny bit, and I've actually gone to the specific file listed in the bug report. Uh, you can actually see it visually renders, um, and it will be a little bit different than how the Blender manual on a web browser will look, but it's similar enough. And you can see you can actually try to edit it. Um, when you try to edit it, it will say you need to be on a branch to make or propose uh, changes to this file. And the only reason that's the case is when you navigate through the files and you finally click on uh, the project point, uh, it takes you to the specific commit. 
which you don't really need to care about. You just need to know that like, I actually still can edit this. I just have to be on a branch. So to get on a branch, there's this little drop down right here, uh, which shows all the different branches. You can just go ahead and click main. That's fine. Um, once you go to main, then you can actually hit the edit button again and it'll bring up this WYSIWYG. So Blender uses uh, internally a structure called restructured text, um, which basically is just a text with a little bit of like fancy syntax to do some things. Um, so we can see down here, here's our actual bug. There's an extra vector. Uh, we can go ahead and remove that. There's a little button if we actually preview our changes. And as I mentioned before, since it uses this restructured text, which is just a little bit of like annotation to do a render on um, the web browser. So all of these asterisks around the project point node make it bold. It'll render in bold on a web screen, um, website. Uh, to get a little bit more information, there is the link to the Blender uh, documentation specifically for the Markdown guidelines. So it'll go over like what restructured Markdown features are supported by Blender, what you should use, what you shouldn't use. Um, and this is actually one of the, the caveats of this approach. Like when you're building the manual, if there is something that is broken, it'll like yell at you. So uh, again, like this workflow is really for very simple things. Removing an extra vector, that's not gonna break anything. Um, if you accidentally like forget some of the syntax, that will break something. Um, so once we've changed, uh, made the changes, added in, fixed it, whatever, uh, we'll need to create a commit. And a commit is basically just, here is my save, and here's a little description about what I did. So up top is what your commit message is. Um, so I have fixed you, either prefix it with a fix or a cleanup uh, that just tells the developers like, hey, it's, I'm either cleaning up something or I'm fixing something that was broken. Uh, a little descriptive message. So I removed the extra vector word from the project point node. And in the description, I just linked to the specific issue where I saw the bug. So like, hey, I'm fixing this bug. Once we save this, oh, actually we'll go back for a second. Um, this option right here will create a new branch. Um, so if you remember, we were on our main branch, which usually you shouldn't commit to. Um, so this will just create a new branch off of that, um, which we'll get to in a moment. But once your commit's been created, uh, you can now create a pull request. Now pull request is just saying, hey, I have some changes from my users uh, copy that I would like to request to put back into Blender's source. Um, so this little screen will come up. It'll show us some changes that we've made. Anything highlighted in red will be a, a removal. Green will be what we've added or changed. So a very simple thing. Uh, the thing to note here is where we're actually taking the changes from and putting them to. So on this right-hand side, we can see that we're doing a pull from my uh, Nate Blender Conference user from the Nate Blender Conference Patch 1 branch, not a very good branch name, um, but that's where we committed to and we're going to request to pull into Blender main. Um, so then we can actually create a pull request and a new dialog will come up that is very similar to the commit, but this is actually for the pull request. So. Uh, in the same fashion, you want to have a descriptive title, what you're doing. Uh, in the actual preview editor down here, you want to add some description of what you are changing. Uh, let's say you are saving multiple files and mul doing multiple commits. This description right here is where you would have the overarching, like, here are all the changes I want to make to Blender. So when you actually create the pull request, it will be live. And uh, this is an actual pull request that is, or I should say was up from my fake user. Uh, and just to show you that that was true, I commented on my own fake thing. Um, but this right here is now where other people can see like your proposed change uh, and they can review it. Um, and you will not have access to actually commit your stuff into Blender. So somebody else will have to approve your pull request 
and actually merge it in. So thankfully, this is not a loophole to like sneak stuff into Blender. Um, there are still some guardrails, but uh, people can come on here and say like, hey, this is like 90% good, but there are a couple tweaks. Um, and if you actually need to update your pull request, it's fairly easy to do so. Uh, it's a very similar process where you navigate to the page or file you need to update. Uh, you go ahead and edit, add your changes. Um, for this instance, I was missing a period. The only difference is instead of creating a new branch, you want to update your old branch. And this will just create a new commit, a new save um, on top of that. It will automatically update your pull request. Um, now, as I mentioned, there are a lot of downsides to this approach. Uh, the biggest one being like the Blender manual updates pretty quickly. And if your copy isn't updated with the main Blender repository, there will be a version drift. And supposedly you can update from the website. When I tried to copy from the website into my or Blender manual to my local um, user repository, I got a 404. So I don't know if this is a limitation of the system or if it's something that you're actually not supposed to do. Uh, I probably should go ask in the, the Blender Builds channel to see if this is a bug or if they just don't want it. Um, but to get around it, you can actually go ahead and delete your fork and then refork it. Uh, I don't recommend this approach because it's very cumbersome. It can get a little bit messy, but like if you are looking to do maybe one or two simple changes, this approach will work for you. Uh, also, since I deceived you guys a little bit, like I am actually willing to help you guys. Um, if you want to build it locally, if you want to contribute, uh, I will gladly on Blender chat walk you through it. Uh, so please go to the docu or the user documentation channel, like at me, um, and yeah, I'll be willing to help. So that's the end of the user documentation portion, um, and now we are on to translation, which is super exciting because this is like really easy, uh, unless you're me, because I only speak one language. <laughs> but uh, people who are way cooler than I might speak too. And that's awesome because Blender makes it like super easy to translate to your language. Um, so translate.blender.org is the platform where you can actually translate. And the platform that's used is called Weblate. And you can't actually make changes. You only ever make suggestions, um, which is nice because you don't even need to log in. You don't need a user. Uh, if you have a Blender account, uh, you can sign in, and then under, I think, your language preference, you can actually then choose what your preferred language is, and the platform will just like start recommending things to translate in your uh, language of choice, or even second language of choice. Um, so to actually uh, make a change, you will go to uh, one of two projects, either the Blender UI or the Blender Manual. For this instance, I chose the Blender UI. Um, there's the UI and there's also the glossary. Uh, I'll go ahead and click on the glossary. Uh, it'll show you all of the different languages that are supported in Blender. Uh, I chose Danish, probably because I was thinking of cheese Danishes when I uh, created it. Uh, and then when you click on it, another UI will appear with kind of just like a general overview of the state of the translation for that language. Um, so it'll show you how many strings there are, how many words, how many characters, statistics of like how many things have been translated, et cetera, et cetera. All you have to do is click this translate button and it'll like dump you into the deep end. Um, the UI is a little bit janky, but if you know the right things to click, uh, you can get through it pretty quickly. Um, so right as we click translate, it like dumped us here. And you'll notice that alpha actually has one thing to check. So down here actually is an existing suggestion um, for the translation. Um, so as I mentioned before, like unless you have a specific permission set by a user or Blender developer, you can only ever suggest. So a different individual had suggested a translation for here. Um, 
So we'll go ahead and choose something that hasn't been suggested, which is diffuse, um, which in Danish is diffuse. Um, at least I checked three different translators and that's what I got, so I, I apologize if that's wrong. Um, but yeah, we can go ahead and the English version, I put in the Danish version and then I just click uh, suggest. And my suggestion's now there. Um, it will have to be accepted for it to actually be translated and that part is done by the Blender developers, but uh, I can actually go in and reject my own um, my own translation, like it, it, there's no notion of like deleting, it's only rejecting. I suspect like if you had the proper permissions, like if you were trusted, you could go um, and like reject other people's suggestions, like if it's a grammatical thing, if it's contextual, like you could say the reason like, hey, this actually isn't quite right and reject it. But um, for now, just if you need, if you made an accident, you can go ahead and reject your own thing, which is kind of funny. But yeah, that's that's basically it. Um, now, what if my language isn't there? So I'm Lithuanian, I do not speak Lithuanian because I'm not very cool, but uh, as I was preparing for this talk, uh, I noticed that the Lithuanian language was not there. So I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Like I can, I can figure out how to actually add it the language. Um, so then like a couple days went by, some life happened and I w actually then got back to my presentation and I noticed that the Lithuanian language was there. And I'm like, hmm, did I just miss it? So I jumped onto Blender Chat and I went to the translation channel and like somebody actually in that time period added the Lithuanian language. Like that is so very cool. Um, so I think my like suggestion is if you are willing to contribute and like commit to uh, translating for your language, like just go ask the devs. Like they set it up and he was good to go. Uh, which uh, made my life much, much easier. Um, so here are some other like useful tidbits. Uh, I mentioned the translation channel. That's all things translation. Um, the Blender devs then are again able to add specific user permissions um, as needed and on a trust-based system. Um, this link right here contains basically all the information you need uh, to contribute, which is not much more than I went through. Uh, and finally, uh, WebBlade is actually a different open source project that Blender is using. So if you want more information just about that platform, this is the documentation for it. So we're getting towards the end of the talk and maybe none of this is super appealing to you, but there are like actually some other ways you can develop or uh, contribute to Blender. Uh, and the first one is just like with your money. And that's pretty easy. Um, as Tan said with his like opening uh, keynote, uh, the money that is contributed does mostly go towards Blender development and then some other little things that help the project. Uh, and the foundation, but this is super easy. Even if everybody does like $1, one euro a month, like if everybody did that, we'll be so much further ahead than we are today. Um, there's also this new extensions platform, which uh, is released, but it is pretty new. So like that probably could be a place where bugs exist. So definitely check that out. Uh, you can even submit your own themes if you want, or if you feel like building a little add-on, you can submit that. Um, but just keep that in mind. Uh, there's also a Blender store, which at the moment is not operational, but I have been told it will be operational in the future. So if you want to get a little Blender swag and also donate, that's a perfect place to do it. Uh, and then also just like help support Blender folks in the community, like CG Cookie, CG Boost, um, just like YouTubers. Uh, they're successful because Blender is successful and Blender is successful because they're successful and it's just like this uh, happy little cycle. So um, I actually, on Blender Kit, you may have um, heard of it. I think there was a talk either last year or the year before that. But it's a place where you can just like add assets and I've created four assets on Blender Kit. And even though they're all free, I made $8, which I was able to donate back to Blender. So that was kind of cool. Uh, and then finally, like, I went through a couple things you could contribute to, but if you want to see all of the different places you can get involved, 
Blender.org slash get involved is like your one-stop shop to see all of the different things um, that you can get, you can help out with. So finally, uh, the animation module needs your help. Um, if you saw the talk yesterday, there's a lot of cool new things coming. Uh, we are rebuilding a lot of the core components of the animation system, uh, so there will be bugs. There will be documentation that needs to be written, and we'll probably uh, create some new terminology that also needs to be translated. So like, you can take this talk and you can come help out. So the animation and rigging channel uh, is the channel to go if you want to, to join us. There is also on DevTalk, the animation and rigging uh, section, which all of the different um, meetings we have, all of the notes get posted there. And typically every Thursday, sometimes Tuesday, at around 18 uh, Amsterdam time, um, is when we have a weekly meeting. So you are free to come join if you want. Uh, and with that, thank you. So I got through that a little bit quicker than I thought, which is cool. So I guess there is some time for questions. So the, uh, the comment was uh, when you're submitting a bug is to actually follow up on your bug. And yes, very much so. Like uh, you might submit a bug on a Tuesday and nothing happens for a week. Well, actually a lot of things happen throughout the week. Maybe it's just not your bug. So uh, definitely check in on your bug. There might have been some feedback. There may have been like an open question. It might need more information. So like, yeah, it's definitely not a like static, go put it on a shelf, walk away. It'll be taken care of. No, no, like that would be nice, but uh, you do need to be a little bit involved, especially if you want to see it get fixed. Okay. Come a little bit closer. So the question is about duplicate PRs. Uh, if two people find the same issue and one submits a pull request and another person submits a pull request, how do we resolve that? Um, it's kind of like a race condition. So typically whoever gets approved and pulled in first, um, it's on the person who actually will submit, or, or not submit, but actually press the magic button to pull it in to make sure that this thing hasn't already been addressed. Um, so typically what happens is the list of like open PRs tends to be pretty small so people know what's in flight. Uh, if there is a duplicate, usually one of the devs feels like, oh, this is a duplicate. Uh, I'm going to close your PR out in favor of the other one. They'll typically put a little note like this is a duplicate closing out in favor of another one. Um, another like this is a little bit technical, but like Git kind of forces you to update your code before you submit new changes. So it actually will, from like a code perspective, be like, oh, wait a minute, this, this already is like changed. And then when you update your pull request, uh, it'll show you that, that that's already been changed. Um, but typically that gets fixed by a developer or somebody who understands like what's going on. Ooh, 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 oh man. Oh. I hope somebody wouldn't ask that question. First of all, um, please don't. Like, that's a little annoying. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, so the, the question is, what happens if you submit a quote unquote bug that is actually a feature request? Uh, please don't do this. Issues and bugs are for defects in Blender. If you do want to submit a feature request, there are some places where you can do that. Um, specifically in DevTalk or the forums, and I will try jumping back through my slides a bit. Uh, 
Um, let's see, there is this form option right here, and that form button will take you to DevTalk. Uh, on there, I'm not 100% sure, but it is like a submit a feature request. If you click that, it'll take you to right click select, which at the moment is kind of the de facto, I have an idea for a feature, so I'm going to put it on there. Other people can comment, upvote, and sometimes it gets into Blender. Um, I'll prescribe something else, like if you are willing to put in the blood, sweat, and tears to get this feature across the line, you can go, uh, and I'll, I'll use the animation and rigging module as an example, you can actually go attend a meeting, you can propose something. Typically, the, the module owner will request that you create a feature request, either on right-click select or um, in a Google Doc or something. Uh, the next meeting, you can put it on the agenda. People can review it. Uh, other animators could be like, oh, well, actually, this won't work because such and such. Or like, hey, this is actually a good idea. Um, and then it kind of gets into purgatory. Like, unless you're willing to do it yourself or find somebody else who is willing to do it for you, uh, it might end up on a roadmap and might not. And I understand that's, like, very disappointing, but... Um, if you're pretty persistent and you're willing to, to find people who are willing to help out or learn how to do it yourself, then that, I think, is a much, much better way than just, like, whining that my feature isn't there and, like, trying to, like, sneak it in as a bug. Like, that's not going to work. Please don't do that. All right. Uh, last question, I think. Or two questions, actually. Uh, sure. Oh. Oh. Sorry. Uh, I think you were for Ampon, we'll get back to you. Your question? Yeah, uh, so I already put the so I apologize if I missed this, but um, is there like a style guide for how to uh, write code requests or how to write code and how to document it or something like that? Yes. I think my computer went to sleep. Uh, so the question was, is there any documentation on like a style guide or how to write a pull request? And yes, absolutely. Um, we are going to... Uh, Blender portal uh, under build Blender. So this is in the, the projects on Blender. Uh, it'll bring you to the home page. There is build Blender. And this is basically everything you need, um, like how to build Blender first, but everything else, so like bug reports, automated testing, et cetera, et cetera. I think under the contributing code, um, it'll actually walk you through how to create a pull request. Um, if you're doing it like on your computer through the command line, it is a little bit more intense, but there are some coding guidelines and for commit messages, there is like a style guideline. Um, which more or less is like what you should do. Keep it short, keep it concise, keep it on point. Um, I kind of went over that in my own way, but yeah, absolutely. All this information is on the documentation. And then... So the question is, uh, what if I just want to try something? And I really recommend this. And to do that, uh, you can go ahead and um, when you create a fork, like you own that copy. And uh, again, there are permissions where like nothing can accidentally sneak into Blender without like the right people um, doing it for you. So yeah, you could like honestly clone this and like delete it. That's fine, like Blender is okay. So from here, this is like your playground. You can go ahead and you can like play around. Um, I would suggest creating a branch just so you don't like mess up the quote unquote main, which is like uh, the source of truth for Blender. Main's actually what the versions get cut off of. 
So I would create a branch just to play around with. Uh, anything in a branch is contained in a branch, and you won't break anything. So that's how I would go about it. Uh, I unfortunately am out of time, but I will go outside. To, uh, Yes, uh, so for the microphone, uh, there are developers here, um, specifically for the animation module, but like also other Blender developers. So like, talk to a dev. Um, those are the people who actually put features in. So see a dev, ask a dev, uh, high five a dev. Uh, and with that, I am out of time, but I will be outside uh, getting a little bit of fresh air, so feel free to follow me and <laughs> thank you.